Welcome to 10.2, find arc measures. Our essential question is how do I use angle measures, okay that's what we're accustomed to, angle measures, in order to find arc measures. So what's this thing arc all about? Well an arc is a part of a circle, not like Noah's Ark. <laughs> In that term it just means box really. Uh, but this is a part of a circle. <clears throat> so the green here, that is an arc, or the pink there, that is an arc. But to understand arcs, it's helpful for us to identify its central angle. Central angle of a circle <clears throat> is an angle whose vertex is on the center, or is the center. So pretty simple. Central angle means the vertex is on the center of the circle. So this is an example of a central angle here because the vertex is on the center. And if the measure of this central angle, so as we are thinking about this arc, let's look at its central angle. Here's the central angle, begins at the center and comes out and uh, cuts off, let's say it that way, or intercepts uh, this part of uh, the circle. So this is an arc <clears throat> created by uh, this uh, central angle. And when the central angle is less than 180 degrees, then we call that arc that is created by that central angle, we call that a minor arc. When the central angle is greater than 180 degrees, so this blue here, uh, you can think of this uh, central angle on the outside here, it's not even it's not even obtuse, it's not even a straight angle, it's beyond that, it's uh, greater than 180 degrees, then we call that a major arc. So minor arc has a central angle that's less than 180 degrees, and a major arc uh, has a central angle, you can call it, uh, greater than 180 degrees. And then a semicircle <clears throat> is a particular kind of arc that is exactly 180 degrees. And notice that your central angle here is really a diameter because uh, remember it's 360 degrees all the way around in a circle and so half of that half of 360 is 180 so this is half of your circle and so this is going to be a diameter so a diameter uh, cuts out two semicircles one on one side and then another semicircle on the other side when we are talking about a minor arc we can just use two uh, letters to endpoints uh, A and B so this is minor arc AB but when we want to talk about the major arc we could not say arc AB because the assumption is you take the shortest path from A to B along the circle so in order to identify a major arc you need three points on it and so you'll start with the one endpoint and then give me another point <clears throat> Uh, somewhere anywhere on this arc it could be over here or over down over here as long as it forces me to go the long way around the circle uh, that is greater than 180 degrees so a major arc will always have three points identifying it and a minor arc <clears throat> you could use three points but we only use uh, two points Let's talk about measuring <clears throat> these arcs now. We are familiar with uh, measuring a central or an, an angle, and in this case it's a central angle because the vertex is on the center. <clears throat> and the reason it's helpful to identify the central angle with the arc is because the measure of the arc is the same as the measure of the central angle that creates that arc. Again, think of this central angle as coming out and intercepting and chopping, cutting out uh, this part of the circle. And this arc, the measure of this arc, 
is the same as the central angle. <clears throat> Notice also the terminology we are accustomed with to a uh, accustomed with a italics M and then the shape of an angle there so we would pronounce this as the measure of angle ACB same kind of concept with the measure of an arc and this is a new symbol for us this is not a bar on top otherwise that would be segment AB but when it has an arc on top of the AB then we pronounce it arc so this is the measure of arc AB so we know the measure of arc AB by looking at the measure of the, its central angle, the central angle that created that arc. And because the central angle is 50 degrees, therefore the measure of the arc is 50 degrees. Hey, but what if I want the measure of a major arc going all the way around here? Well, the way you do that <clears throat> is you take 360 and then you subtract the minor arc from it. So if I want this major arc, the measure of the major arc, then I look at the measure of the, I look at the minor arc that is left over and I figure out the measure of that. Okay, that one is 50 degrees, the minor arc. So I know it's 360 degrees all the way around a circle. So I take out the 50 degrees uh, from that. Let me make this pink so it just matches there. I uh, take out 50 degrees uh, from the full circle and what I'm left with, the 310 in this particular case, is the measure of the, ma the major arc. So the measure of this major arc is 310 and of course you can double check your work by making sure that the measure of all of these arcs uh, all the way around a circle add up to uh, 360 degrees. Let me go ahead and do that one just to be consistent here. Okay, let me show you an example. <clears throat> they want us to find the measure of each arc of, okay, what does that symbol mean? Cent oh, <laughs> I almost said center. Uh, circle. You had it before I did. Uh, find the measure of each arc of circle P. Remember, uh, P is the center of the circle, which is actually not part of the circle. The circle is here but this is the center of the circle, so we identify the circle by its center. So find the measure of each arc of circle P where segment RT is a diameter. Oh, well, that's really helpful for us. So know, them telling us that segment RT is a diameter, then I know that this is a semicircle. This guy here is a semicircle going from uh, the endpoint of a diameter to the other endpoint of a diameter that's always going to be 180 degrees. And then I have a central angle here of 110 degrees. So therefore, so the measure of this angle is 110. Therefore, the measure of the arc created by that central angle will also be 110. 10 degrees. So now I want to figure out what the measure of this remaining arc is. And the way you can do that, I know that this is 180 degrees. This central angle is 110, so 180 plus 110. That gives me 290 degrees. And so I know that it's 360 degrees all the way around. So 360 and subtract 290 from that and I get 70. So the measure of this central angle is 70 degrees and therefore the measure of the minor arc created by that central angle is also 70 degrees. And let me check to make sure that I'm all right here. The measure of all of these arcs going around the circle should add up to 360 degrees. So here's a semicircle that's 180 degrees and here I have 70 plus 110 that's 180 so 180 plus 180 gives me 360. So I am set. Here is a rather obvious uh, postulate that you probably were thinking about as we did that last problem. It's uh, simply the arc addition postulate saying simply that if I have this pink arc 
if I know the measure of this pink arc and I know the measure of this orange arc, then in order to get the measure of the blue arc, all that I do is just add pink plus orange equals blue. Pink plus orange equals blue. So even over here, is that useful? No, never mind. We'll hold on to that. In fact, let's, um, yeah, let's do this one. We're ready for example two. So all, all that we're saying is that you can just add up the, just like we add up angles. So what is the measure of this entire angle here? It would be 81 plus 61 degrees. Those are your two central angles. Same thing for the arcs. So what's the measure of this entire arc on the outside here? It'd be 81 degrees plus 61 degrees. Let's make sure that we know the designation here. So, so this is that we pronounce this by saying the measure of arc AC. So here is point A and here is point C. So now the question is, is it this smaller arc, which would be, which would be a minor arc, or are they referring to the major arc going the long distance around? And whenever you only have two letters, therefore it is always the shorter distance between those two points. So it's going to be a minor arc. So what is the measure of arc AC? We would just say take, take 29 plus 108, which is what is that? 137. So the measure of this minor arc is 137. And notice here, they're asking for the measure of arc ADC. So here I am starting at A, and I want to head towards C, but they're forcing me to come around and go through point D. So this is going to be a major arc, and in order to do that, it's a major problem, not too bad actually, to just add these three numbers together. And so the measure of this major arc is going to be the measure of these, the sum of these uh, three central angles. And I wouldn't, I would not say that every time you see three letters, it for sure is a minor arc, but uh, I'm sorry, a major arc, but almost always, almost always it is going to be a, a major arc. And if it is a major arc, it has to be uh, three letters. So let's check this one out. A, C, D, yep, that's a major arc. Add those three together. And then E, B, D, E, B, D, yep, that's all the way around there. Hey, he's, here's the easy way. Uh, if I want this mark here, EBD, all the way around the outside, let's go ahead and do that. Yep. If I want that arc all the way around, I could add up these minor arcs, these, these central angles on the, the inside here, or what could I do? What would be the easier way to do this? Just take 360 and subtract 61. Right? I, I know this minor arc on the inside here is 61, so subtract, and what is that, 299, I think? So I know the major arc is 299 by simply taking away the minor arc uh, from 360 degrees. And then one last little bit uh, here. Oh, I'm sorry. You're ready to do now uh, your six problems. And to determine the measure of these different arcs. And so this is a shape right here. This is arc TQ. And what they're asking for is the measure. So if you wanna put an equal sign here, uh, remember shapes are not equal, but numbers are equal. So if you wanted to put uh, the italic M in front of that, now this is referring to the measure of arc TQ. And you can give me the number, uh, how many degrees, the measure of arc TQ is. And of course, that's pretty simple. You just match it with the, the central angle here. Now, in order to figure this one out, remember the, the first thing to do is look to see if you have any uh, diameters. And this guy, is this a diameter? It kind of looks like it might be a diameter, but it's a little bit of a bend there. And so I cannot say that it is a diameter. This one, looks like it is a diameter, but you cannot assume. 
Uh, you must be told that it is a diameter in order for you to assume that it is a diameter. But I do know for sure that this is the diameter. And how do I know that? Well, because this is 120 plus 60 is 180. So I know the central angles, the sum of those two central angles is 180. Therefore, the sum of their arcs will also be 180. And so therefore, this is a uh, semicircle. And so I'll let you figure out how to get that one, right? That's easy enough for you to do. So pause the video, please. Go ahead and do those. And one last little theorem here. Uh, congruent circles and congruent arcs. In order for two circles to be congruent circles, they have to have the same radius. They have to have the same radius. That makes sense, doesn't it? They have to have the, the same distance from the center to the circle. And that's also uh, if you have two circles which have whose radii, and I would say radii, whose radius is the same length, uh, or is the same. Remember, uh, the radius refers to the length of a radius. And so if two circles have um, congruent radii, <laughs> then uh, those two uh, circles are congruent. In order for two arcs to be congruent, uh, they must have the same measure. They must have the same measure. And also, the arcs must be either on the same circle or on congruent circles. Okay, let's talk about that. In order for a two